Am, am I well, correct? the opposite of independence is control, and you're right. There's an agenda there uh, for us to be controlled by someone else, and, and that is the the paramount political question of our day that the American people have to ask themselves. Do you want to be uh, to continue to be a free and independent people, able to govern ourselves, to determine the future for ourselves and our children, or do you want to be ruled by a tiny elite who determine your future for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the question, and uh, both of the senators feel the same way. Uh, there is an agenda, uh, and it was laid, it's been laid out many times over the last few decades, but... Uh, uh, if you control the essentials in people's lives, uh, fuel and food, uh, you control them completely. And that's the direction that we're moving, and it's a very, mm-hmm. uh, or should be, a very sobering thought for people. And they might consider the, the one party, the one candidate, uh, or pair of candidates who uh, have pledged themselves to uh, to stop this and to do something about it and to lead us back uh, in the direction that we should go. Well, l- let me just mention, I hit the ground running here, and I know our time's getting away, but uh, I wanted to jump into the meat so quickly that that I need to clarify. Any long-term listeners of our show know that I had the uh, privilege of beginning to go to the Constitution Party Convention back in April. Uh, I went in there. I, I was not well-known within your group. I was uninvited, but I came in out of curiosity and what I was amazed to see at the convention were average citizens who had a significant role uh, in a very orderly convention where there was actual debate. Uh, another gentleman who uh, is highly regarded in many respects, Alan Keyes, came in. Uh, he made his positions very, very clear. He was treated with respect. Uh, I had an opportunity to interview him while he was there. Uh, there were real debates on foreign policy and other issues as opposed to the dog and pony shows that you get with the Republican and Democratic conventions, which are heavily scripted and I find very, very insulting as a citizen and are very manipulative. And this was actually town hall citizenship directly in action. Uh, the people spoke and uh, nominated uh, Chuck Baldwin uh, and yourself as a ticket for the Constitution Party. And I felt like there was still some hope in our country when I saw this process ongoing and that there were real issues that are really being discussed with real principles and strong uh, you know, Christian-based ba- uh, ethics that form the fundamentals of the platform that were discussed. I- even uh, in a broader sense that, that other freedom-loving Americans that maybe don't – uh, accept all of the uh, details of, of spiritual beliefs and things like that, that that, that uh, Constitution people are looking out for the rights of everyone and uh, trying to preserve the right for everyone to be self-deterministic in how you choose to uh, believe and worship and speak. And I find that you're relatively unique as a party in that respect. Well, I, I thank you for saying that. I, I believe we are unique. Um, you know, we... we uh believe in America and its people, and uh, I mean, personally, uh, as a lawyer, I um, I look at my role as potentially a vice president. Mm-hmm. If and I were elected to that office, uh, I would represent the American people in the way that a lawyer does his client. In other words, he, during the time of that representation, that client's interest is paramount in his mind. Mm-hmm or at least it should be, and we really need leadership who, uh, who, who are willing to put the American people in their interest uh, first. I mean, uh, we may be citizens of the world, as some of our recent leaders have said, but um, we need a president who's president of the United States. Mm-hmm. Right, and uh, rather than having been groomed for this position your whole life, like some of the candidates we get in other parties, uh, you, you and uh, Pastor Baldwin had very successful careers in your own right, raising your families, uh, trying to be a blessing to your individual communities, and uh, basically answered a call when your fellow citizens ask you to, to help in this particular respect. Uh, how have the large uh, media leaders in the evangelical movement, I know you briefly mentioned your talks with them, uh, like, for example, like Dr. Dobson, uh, Janet Parshall, uh the Council on National Policy and the like. How have they responded to your campaign and your positions? Well, I would say uh, with uh, 
with benign neglect would be the best way to put it. Uh, I had discussions with them, but only before the campaign actually started. Uh, they are clearly not supportive of us and uh, really will do nothing to help us. I mean, they, um, they're they Republicans all the way, even though Dr. Dobson, the man that I've admired my whole life, and my wife and I raised our daughter uh, with his advice and books and so forth, uh, he said he would not support uh, McCain under any circumstances, but uh, now he seeks a way out of that commitment. Because the alternative is just too horrible, you see. Uh, and the same with all, uh, with, with several of the other leaders. They're, they're just not interested uh, unless you're a Republican. Uh, I've been in these groups for many years and talked to them many, many times. And uh, we share so many things together and so many uh, commonalities. But... Um, um, if you break away from the Republican Party because it no longer shares your your views, your principles, um, you're dead to them, basically. So, the, I, I mean, I don't want to have you speculate on what they're thinking is. Myself, personally, I can't understand why any explanation for that other than the fact that they see that they have some kind of power that they want to hang on to, which I think is a facade anymore, because I think not only the Republican leadership, but even the rank-and-file Republican voters have told evangelicals that uh, they don't need them and their influence. They've chosen their own approach, and, and it's, it's, it's quite a watermark when we see the selection of John McCain. It's a message sent to evangelicals uh, that they're passe and that their, their influence has waned. And they have some hard decisions to make. Either they can continue to be like Charlie Brown and hope that uh, Lucy's going to hold the football one more time, uh, whether it's picking uh, good judges or dealing with the pro-life issue or uh, the border, securing the border, other things, or they can look in a new direction and uh, try to vote on their principles. Uh, I, I know, and we've just got a couple minutes here, but uh, – I do know they've they've uh, uh, emphasized this uh, horrible scenario that would occur under an Obama administration, and I know it, it, there would be many terrible things, including uh, increased subjection to international law, greater taxes, diminished right for the unborn. But uh, would there not also be some horrible things that would happen under a McCain administration as far as eroding civil freedoms of speech and assembly, which will even come back and hit people of faith eventually, uh, increase government size and debt, financing by Federal Reserve agencies, uh, wider war and devastation and the like? Aren't, aren't those also similar threats? Yes, uh, plus all the threats you mentioned about Obama are still there for McCain. I mean, mm-hmm. You've probably read today that uh, when he was asked the question of whether Tom Ridge's pro-abortion uh, record would eliminate him from being uh, vice president, he said, no, it wouldn't. Um, the only other person he's considering, Joe Lieberman, a liberal Democrat, um, what could say more, uh, mm-hmm. what could speak higher about these two parties being one and the same than the fact that they they cross each other like that it it uh, you know it's embarrassing sometimes and sad to see these evangelical leaders once who were great right uh be publicly humiliated and just come back you know as the book of proverbs said uh like a dog to his own vomit you know they just keep coming back uh, no matter what humiliation they suffer the president refers to them as wackos and uh mccain obviously totally disrespects them and yet they beg him, uh, please return our phone calls. Let's talk about this. See if we mm-hmm. let's see if we can work through these issues. He won't even talk to them. Well, I've heard that just today that he has formed a Sunday school now in his group to uh, to see maybe if that might uh, sway evangelicals more. So uh, they're trying every kind of condescending trick possible. It reminds me of uh, watching something like the Jerry Springer show with uh, these abused spouses that cling to the men that continue to beat them, or, or a cop's episode or something. It's very painful to watch, and it's up to evangelicals to uh, wake up and smell the coffee and see the opportunity that's there. Uh, I know we've come up to the end of our interview time, so I just want to ask you very quickly, can you explain to my listeners how they can find out more about the Constitution Party, your positions uh, in the current presidential campaign, and how they can support your work and get involved locally? 
Well, uh, they can go to our website. Our campaign website is baldwin2008.com. And uh, this coming Sunday, all day, uh, we have a, a money bomb going on where we're going to be on the radio, uh, myself and uh, Dr. Baldwin and many people from across the country uh, who support us from all walks of life. We're going to be on the uh, radio for for uh, 24 hours, I believe, uh, uh, raising money so people could listen to that. You can go to the, uh, uh, there's a link off of Baldwin 2008 to uh, this uh, website. It's called no Wor- no New World Order dot com, mm-hmm. and it is the central point for the uh, for the money bomb and those broadcasts. So we would certainly appreciate people doing that and mm-hmm. helping us if it's at all possible. And individuals can make an impact in the Constitution Party. You don't have to be wealthy or powerful or well connected like any other parties. You can come right in and immediately have a direct impact and make your presence known, right? Well, that's exactly right. I would say one of the most obvious uh, things about our party, as you pointed out yourself, is that uh, it's made up of uh, American citizens who who love their country and are concerned, and they're just ordinary people like everyone else who, who are willing to give their time and commitment and and finances to try to save their country. Well, I want to thank you so much. There's so much more I want to ask you. Would you be willing to come back and talk to us again in some detail about some more issues? I know this has been an introduction, uh, but I would really like to have you come back and speak in greater detail. But I want to respect your time. You've got a lot of places to be at once. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, And I want to remind all our local listeners that you're a favorite son. You're uh, from Memphis and have your practice in Memphis here. So let's gather around our, our, our Tennessee brother here and brother in the Lord. And let's just see some wonderful things happen for our country. And I want to just wish you Godspeed and, and best wishes as you uh, try to ring the bell of liberty across the country here. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being with you. Well, you have an open invitation here, and you'll have a respectful uh, host and audience that, that wants to hear what you have to say. All right. And I thanks appreciate ag- it. Thank you again.